Com. In this video I want to demonstrate how you can achieve this simple but cute effect in Photoshop CS5 Extended. Before I go any further, can I just thank everyone who subscribed uh, over the last year. We've now reached about 300 subscribers on YouTube, which is quite uh, an achievement, especially given the sort of messing around with the subscriptions module that YouTube have been engaged in over the last few months. And I think I should just quickly mention again, choosing the email option if you've been having difficulties finding uploads in your subscriptions box. Okay now, so on with the video. The document I'm working on has got three layers, one for the hearts, uh, a second layer for the snow and these are projected over the snowy backdrop. To bring up the animation panel you go to window animation and that brings up a panel which defaults down to the bottom position in Photoshop. Now if I just scrub through you'll be able to see that this is where all the animation action is taking place and yet at the same time this can't be because as you can see there are absolutely no keyframes in the timeline. Now, as the document I'm working on is not actually a movie, that leaves the question of where exactly the animation is coming from. And the answer, of course, is that I'm working with smart objects. The top layer is this heart layer, which fades from having a black background through to transparency and back to black again. That uses a heart-shaped brush that I created in a previous video, and uh, there'll be a link to that and the download to the brushes as well. And the snow layer is one that I created from the add noise filter. You can create your own or you can use another snow texture. But I double click on the hearts layer and we'll take a closer look at the smart object that I created. All we've got is this black layer with the pattern overlay of the heart shaped bocce. To show you how this has all been put together I'm going to create a new layer. It's going to be a solid color layer. I'll make it black again and then I'll copy over the FX to the new layer. I'm going to switch off the lower layer and we're going to focus just on the new color fill layer. I'm going to grab the move tool and as you can see we can just slide down the layer in this way and we've got the basis for our animation there. I've undone those changes and I'm going to go down to the timeline and hit the stopwatch on the position property for the color fill layer. We can just ignore the warning that comes up. A keyframe has been automatically inserted. I'm now going to scrub through the timeline to the end and if I change the position, a new keyframe is automatically inserted at the end. I'm trying to match the amount of movement to the amount of time on the timeline so that we get a fairly realistic snowfall uh, when we play back. However, it's a bit too much effort to try to get a perfect uh, match between the beginning and the end position so that we get a perfect loop. Uh, but you could try that if you wanted to, or you could just extend the amount of time on the timeline to whatever length you wanted. I've turned the original layer back on, and I'm going to turn the top layer onto screen mode, and we can now see both layers at the same time. And if, you, if I play back these, you can see that we've got a reasonably full-looking snowfall. However, because both layers are essentially identical except for their keyframes, the effect is a bit fakey. Still, I think it looks pretty cool, though. We could, if we wanted to, remix the patterns. I'm going to double click on the layer effects for the top layer. And as you can see, we've got just the pattern overlay box ticked. Now, I actually created quite a large number of these uh, bocce patterns. And uh, they're actually quite large files that I saved off as patterns. And so I've got quite a few that I can choose from. I'm going to remix the patterns by choosing a different bocce texture for the upper layer. Uh, that one, no, that one will do. And what I'm now going to do is to see what that looks like on the timeline. And that scrubs through fairly well, I think. Now, you may notice that in the timeline, all the keyframes are actually in the style property rather than in the position property. That's because I actually switched from using the, uh, the layer position to using the pattern position as the property that I was going to keyframe. You can use either the layer, you can move the layer uh, with a solid object with an adjustment layer, or you can use uh, the uh, pattern itself. You can move the pattern itself and Photoshop will keyframe either the layer or the pattern. Right, a couple of other things to discuss. First of all, how to create that fade from black to transparent, and secondly, how to actually define the patterns themselves. The fade is extremely simple. All that I did there was to keyframe the fill opacity. Photoshop simply keyframes the fill opacity under the style property. If I turn the fill opacity down to zero, it looks as though the entire layer has gone blank. However, all that's happened is that the black of the solid color layer has disappeared whilst the pattern overlay remains because the pattern overlay is 
uh, part of the layer style and the fill opacity doesn't affect layer styles. As for defining a custom pattern, all we do is to create our bulky or snow texture, go to edit and then define pattern and that gives us a dialog box where we can give the pattern some sort of meaningful name and it should be there in the pattern presets for us to choose from in the future. So having made those changes I'm going to save the smart object and I'm going to go back to the original uh, main document and in this document we've got the snow texture and that was one that I created very simply using the add noise filter and um, altering that by applying a couple of other filters to the resulting image. Now I assume that you'll be able to make your own snow textures so I'm not going to describe the process. You may have already have noticed an error in my snow texture and uh, I noticed it too but kept it there deliberately so that I could demonstrate to you something that can go wrong when you try to use a snow texture uh, in a moving graphic like this. If I move the snow layer to the top it should be possible to see what's what I'm talking about a lot easier. It's a line uh, running across the image is made up of dashes rather than of snowflakes. This is something that happens when you use the add noise filter to create snow or uh, star textures. You need to erase those lines using something like the eraser tool before you actually define the pattern. Those artifacts always occur at the edges of a document and you might not necessarily notice them in a static image but in a moving graphic such as this as you can tell it's practically impossible to ignore them. And that more or less is it. Uh, just one more thing now if you want to output a shorter segment of your movie than the entire timeline just move these boys inwards like that and you'll be able to output just the restricted area that you've chosen. Uh, use the file export menu to export your movie. In my next Photoshop video I'm going to be covering what people call selective color, what I like to call color isolation.